I'm Amy Cherry. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow ya. The price of a vacant lot in Palm Coast is rising. Toby Tobin is editor of GoToby.com and host of Real Estate Matters on WNZF. There are 10,000 square foot lots, and there are over 40,000 of them originally, and there are about 13,000 still available. So having said that, there are 168 Palm Coast lots for sale right now, defined 206 are pending. So just like the single family homes, there are more pending lots than there are available lots. Last December, Palm Coast lots sold for a median price of 22000 He says right now the lowest asking price for a listed lot is nearly $29,000. Median price so far in December is $30,000, from twenty-two dollars to $30,000 in one year. Hear Real Estate Matters every Saturday at 11 a.m. and Sunday at 9 a.m. on WNZF. A local teen who has had a lifetime of medical issues was able to take to the skies over the weekend. John R. King has the story. On Saturday, Teens in Flight, a nonprofit group that provides an aviation experience for teens in need, made 13-year-old Austin Booth's wish of taking a flight in an airplane come true. Austin, who was diagnosed with complex congenital heart disease at birth, has spent much of his 13 years enduring many hospital stays, medical procedures, and doctor's appointments. Jack Howell, president and founder of Teens in Flight, says once they heard Austin's story, especially how he had endured bullying from other kids at school. They knew they had to make his dream of flying an airplane a reality. Anytime that you can do something for a youngster, especially where this young man's every day is questionable, it makes you really feel good that you're able to do something nice. You can help somebody achieve a goal, a wish, and he'll remember that because he's got pictures of him actually flying an aircraft. So it's awesome. And we'll do this, as you well know, our mission, we'll do it for anybody that has a justification for a need for that. And I do it every day. I had kids that needed that. It's not an issue for us. Howell says they're always looking for sponsorships and grants to be able to keep on providing the service. You can find out more on their website, teensinflight.com. You can also look up their Facebook page for pictures of Austin's big day at the controls of an airplane. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm John Art. Members of a new junior chamber in Palm Coast are working hard to create goals and learn more about their community. Karen Johnson has the details. The Junior Chamber of Commerce, a growing group of 30 Flagler Palm Coast High School students, are actively seeking to better understand their future in the community in which they reside. The young group is led by FPC student Brian Soundrain. The main soft skills is to have a good work ethic and ambition and also determination to accomplish your goals. I think that's the three main things that you have to work towards and this project has improved me. The Palm Coast Flagler Regional Chamber has helped the Junior Chamber establish connections to other groups in Flagler County, such as the Flagler Tiger Bay Club, and even helped schedule a Zoom meeting with Palm Coast Mayor Melissa Holland, who explained the importance of being involved in the community, making their voices heard, and what to expect in the future as a working professional. The Junior Chamber meets at the Flagler County Youth Center, which is close to the FPC campus. The Youth Center staff provides a safe physical location for the group and helps students have meetings with business and community leaders. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. What happens when a patient goes to the hospital with COVID symptoms? Carmen Bordeaux is the director of the ICU at Advent Health Palm Coast. She said that they treat many patient symptoms with one goal in mind. The goal is still to try to do everything we can to keep them off the ventilator. Bordeaux said that the treatments vary to keep patients breathing on their own for as long as possible as they treat other symptoms too. To listen to the interview, download the Flagler radio app and then go to the Free For All Friday podcast. Tomorrow, how are patients put on ventilators? From the WNZ Newsroom, I'm Rich Carroll. We are trying to be COVID sensitive and we are having for the first time ever a drive through holiday light display. It's happening nightly from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. through Wednesday at the Florida Agricultural Museum. Kara Hoplick is the museum's executive director. We have hundreds and hundreds of strings of lights and spotlights and lighting up all of the buildings. At the end of the drive through if you're comfortable, you can join us in our 4,000 square foot open air dairy barn for a vi- virtual visit with Santa. Santa is, he's going to be online with us. He's 
of course, still at the North Pole, very busy getting ready for Christmas. There will also be refreshments and some arts and crafts for the kids. Hoblick says they've got an additional surprise, too. We are going to debut our brand new Cracker Bowl. He is a statue, and he is life-size. And he represents the cattle that the Spaniards brought 500 years ago that was the beginning of this huge cattle industry that is so successful now in Florida. So he will be lit up as part of the tour. The experience costs $10 per vehicle. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Amy Cherry.